Good morning, YouTube land. This is Pancho Pantera 7, or as most of you know me, Pancho Cardeña, back with another video. This time it's not just to show some of my clips, well actually it is, but, but this is actually to give back to some of my friends that have been asking me questions over the years, like how do you get going, how do you get started in acting and things like that. Well, I will tell you, don't. <laughs> If you don't love it, don't, because it'll get hard, it'll get challenging, you'll get told no many, many times, and if you don't love it, you'll leave it, you'll quit. So you really got to be sure that you don't just want to be famous, that you really just want to act. And this is what I do. So if you do what I do, feel how I feel, then you can do this. I get up in the mornings right away and I feel like I have to act, right? So I, I'll give myself a workout where I'll just go from monologue to monologue, reading monologues, acting them out with different characters, different accents and so on and so forth. Try to imitate maybe, for instance, the people that are doing it, you know, in, in the movie already. Uh, you know, just to kind of keep fluctuating. It's This is a Jeet Kune Do idea, again, martial arts and acting. Jeet Kune Do idea. To always have a sense of adaptability. All right, don't forget to like and subscribe, and thank you, and bye-bye. Do you remind me? You're going to need a lot more than that, Vato. Siéntate! Hey, who's this guy? What the fuck is he doing here? Where am I? Who? I am? Who am I? Who I am is a question for ages. Okay, that's like the word the one we're searching for to find out who I am, who's in there, who wants to come out and say hey. Uh -huh. Who I am is too deep and too it's almost like you gotta go in there and, and, and pull out the thing like in the movie, you know, the thing came out of the stomach, you know, and the people in the fucking spaceship, you know, and the rest of the piece. My name is Benzo Sogolione. Benzo Sogolione. I'm also known as Benny the Groins, Sammy the Snots, so, uh, and Bud, Toby the Tuba, and once it's Miss Philip Lavina. But that was at a party, and it was years ago. I smoked a little bit of weed, and I had a lot of what to do, and suddenly I'm in a business and singing show tunes. This happened, but it has nothing to do with what I'm here with you fine gentlemen today, so I apologize. That being said, I'm also known to the people who know me the best as uh, the fucking doctor. The second part of the question you asked me is why am I am here. I am here representing Mr. Paul Vitti as his New position has yet said, Seti. I don't know what to say, really. Three minutes to the biggest battle of our professional lives. All comes down to today. Now, either we heal as a team, or we're going to crumble. Inch by inch, play by play, till we finished. We're in hell right now, gentlemen. Believe me, if we can stay here, get this shit kicked out of us, or we can fight our way back into the light. Climb out of hell. One inch at a time. Now I can't do it for you. I'm too old. I look around and I see these young faces and I think I mean I made every wrong choice a middle-aged man can make. I uh, pissed away all my money. Believe it or not. I chased off anyone who would ever love me. And lately I can't even stand with the face that I see in the mirror. You know, when you get old in life, 
things get taken from you. I mean, that's part of life. But you only learn that once you start losing stuff. You find out life is a game of inches. And so it's football. Because either in life or football, the margin for error is so small. I mean, one half a step too late or too early and you don't quite make it. One half a second too slow or too fast and you don't quite catch it. The inches we need are everywhere around us. They're in every break of the game, every minute, every second. On this team, we fight for that inch. On this team, we tear ourselves and everyone else around us to pieces for that inch. We claw with our fingernails for that inch because we know when we add up all those inches, that's going to be the fucking difference between winning and losing. Between living and dying. I'll tell you this. In any fight, it's the guy who's willing to die who's going to win that inch. And I know that as long as I'm willing to live, I will fight. Because that's what living is. It's the six inches in front of your face. No, I can't do it for you. You got to look at the guy next to you. Look into his eyes. Now I think you're going to see a guy who will go that inch with you. You're going to see a guy who will sacrifice himself for this team because he knows when it comes down to it, you're going to do the same for him. That's a team, gentlemen. And either we heal now as a team, or we will die as individuals. That's football, guys. That's all it is. Now, what are you going to do? I might be the only person on the face of the earth that knows you're the greatest woman on earth. I might be the only one who appreciates how amazing you are in every single thing that you do. Yeah, you are with Spencer. Spence. And in every single thought that you have and how you say what you mean and how you always, always mean something that is all about being straight and good. I think most people miss that about you. And I watch them wondering how they can watch you when they're full, win their plates and every kid that they just met, the greatest woman in life. That the fact that I get it makes you feel good about me. Yeah, never interrupt me, okay? Not if there's a fire, not if you hear a sound of a thought from my home, and one week later there's a smell coming from there that can only be a decaying human body, and you have to hold a hanky through your face because the stench is so thick that you think you're going to faint. Even then, don't come knocking. Or if it is election night and you're excited and you want to celebrate because some watch packer that you date has been elected the first queer president of the United States, and he's going to have you down to Camp David, and you want someone to share the moment with, even then, don't come knocking. Not on this door, not for any reason. Do you get me, sweetheart? Very well. Where do I begin? My father was a relentlessly self improving bomb, while lingerie owner from Belgium with low grade narcolepsy and a perchin for pocketing. My mother was a 15-year-old French prostitute named Chloe with webbed feet. My father would womanize, he would drink, he would make outrageous claims like he invented the Christian word. Sometimes he would accuse chestnuts of being lazy, a sort of general malice that only the genius possessed and the insane lament. My childhood was typical. Summers in Rangoon lose lessons in the spring, make meat helmets. 
When I was insolent, I was blessed in a burlap bag and beaten with reeds. Pretty standard, really. At age 12, I received my first trial. At the age of 14, a Zoroastrian named Vilma ritualistically shaped my testicles. This really is nothing like a Sean Scrooge. I see. Right, I suggest you try it. Thank <laughs> you.